Hello, Svetlana. Hello, Marnie. <laughs> we already had uh, one try with the video, but unfortunately I had to figure out how to mirror the video so you can read uh, Fritz 10 and 9 and Chess Bay 16 in the background. It's kind of the new setup for the new studio, which I have. It's still uh, a little calm and I'm just fixing all the things. I did all of this uh, just today so uh yeah but I it, looks... Think it looks great yeah thank you so much yes uh, i'm i'm quite happy to and uh, the the video quality is uh, very good unfortunately almost too good you can see every single thing of my in my face but well yeah that's uh, how we have to deal with that and i hope the sound quality is better as well so yeah things are improving slowly and surely but talking about improving i want to improve my chest mm -hmm. You at home want to improve your chess too. This is why we have Svetlana, lucky for all of us. What smart moves do you have for us today? Yeah, let, uh, let me share the screen. Sure. Yep, so there it is. this is the first uh, position we'll be looking at. And uh, this is a very typical middle game position. And we will be deciding when to maintain the tension or when to release it. So this will be about some typical pawn structures and uh, pawn breakthroughs. Right now, we're not exactly at the moment where we decide um, whether to maintain or release the pressure or not, but oh, we are still looking at, uh, at a middle game position where you will need to find the plan for white. Okay, so I have to find the plan here for white in this middle game. Mm -hmm. And the queen just moved to d7. Well, that's cute. Okay, now what else do we have to think of here? So this is pretty crowded in the middle. And... I see those juicy spots, d4 and d5. Hmm. I, so I'm an attacking player, as you know, and I normally like those kind of positions, but this is actually contraproductive, right? Normally you should exchange some pieces and... Uh, <sighs> so, okay, let me say it like this. My usual plan would be to get the knight from f3 to probably e1. And then I would play f4. <laughs> that's that's exactly what happened in the game. I don't know why you're doubting yourself. <laughs> I thought it because it's like, it's so, it, well, it's so s simple maybe. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is quite simple because we are not at the, at the main, uh, at the main tactic yet, but okay. you found, you found the right plan. This is probably the only productive plan that, uh, that you can go for here. All the other pieces are, are doing well. And we, what we need to do is just cr to create a bit more pressure in the center and F4 is, is exactly the way to do it. Um, so cool white played knight e1 the other interesting thing that i thought you might look at is bishop c3 and try to take that knight um but i think usually it's not that great to go after pawns like that because then remember the opponent will have more time for for counterplay with for example f5 and you might get that pawn but at the same time you will start to have problems on the other side of the board yeah Yes, this is correct. And I get the idea that to it is probably also a good idea to exchange the bishop on b2 because it is not very good. But then again, the knight on a5 is also not so active at the moment. And I don't think it can mm. get more active in in the next minutes. So yeah, let's go for And f4, f4 this is this is right. Nice. And um, yeah, now Black continued with f5 move himself, and this is uh, the the crucial moment of uh, of the game. Definitely, it's a closed. Uh, it's it's a rather close position right now, where tension just continues to build up, and very few exchanges have been made. And in positions like these, it can be 
difficult to choose exactly which plan to pursue, uh, which pawn to capture or not to capture. And uh, this is uh, uh, this is your this is the real task now. Now oh, it's not no. be as easy as night. I, I, I was hoping I solved it and we can go to the next. <laughs> 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 yeah so yeah so i have to tell you um middle games <laughs> and this is actually what i'm hearing so many times from so many players um middle games is one of the most difficult things for them mm -hmm. yeah right and i think those types of positions is are exactly where you can tell the difference between a stronger player and a weaker player uh -huh. um, because this is uh, these decisions can be made by stronger players either faster or they know the right moments to for example capture the pawns or not to capture yeah. whereas yeah. A, weak, a weaker player would probably feel uncomfortable in this position because it looks really complicated with and there's a lot of uh, pressure on uh, for either side and they would be tempted to just exchange everything and make those uh, make those trades which is not always preferable and that is something that strong players have uh, built in their in their intuition hmm. okie dokie now we can take a pawn we can take the f pawn or the e pawn now the reason we played f4 is to maybe get an open line, but black countered it, of course, with f5. But if we take e5, eh, it can be taken back with the pawn, and then the queen has more or less an open line and actually has a lot of pressure maybe on d3. Now let's take a look. But if I take the f5 pawn, that's that doesn't help me at all because there's three four five pieces uh, protecting so you can actually choose which one to get into a better position maybe then there's a threat if black takes f4 then the bishops have to be exchanged and maybe oops and maybe black can i was wondering whether um <laughs> whether this was the exact position or not and and is it the exact position oh no svetlana you're gone no I mean, it, it made it, it made it even uh, more complicated i think oh uh, you were uh, you were gone for a second my internet connection is unstable oh please <laughs> oh boy oh boy sorry sorry um you were you were thinking if this was the correct position and now you play yes, it is it is now yes there was one more calm move that i needed to make before before giving it to you. this i think this makes it more complicated oh gosh so the queen no what happened the queen moved to c2 two and black laid g5 oh wow i would like to be black here i think i like it when the pawns are pressuring so mm -hmm. why did That's the queen... Until you find the move for white. Oh, oh, damn it. Okay, so the queen moved to c2. It was on d1. Yeah, don't think about the queen uh, queen c2 move. It's, but I uh... can't. I cannot unthink it. It's like if you <laughs> tell me don't think about pink elephants. I will always think about pink elephants <laughs> now. Oh, gosh. This is really complicated, which actually tells me again that I'm the weak chess player here, of course. <laughs> but um, so what, there's there's so much pressure from black going on. I don't like that at all. I think the only way to release a little bit of pressure is to take e5. Okay. Yeah, and so the queen we went to c2 to protect the bishop. Uh huh. Just okay. Thinking. So you found uh, you, you found the reason why the queen went to c two. I wasn't even thinking why the queen <laughs> went to c two. Oh, okay. Um, I think if you do this, um, black could now open open the file and uh, oh, no. potentially start attacking the pawn on d three. And uh, I'm not exactly sure who's in whose favor was this exchange. Okay. Because you still. Sorry, you still haven't uh, really opened the F file for yourself. And if you keep doing that, then that only activates Black's pieces even more. Right? Mm. So 
this modification probably is not in your favor. And uh, this is uh, this is what we are trying to learn here is, is this even the right time to make those captures? Okay, so how about I play the queen to c3? Okay, queen c3 with what idea? Well, black cannot take on f4. Okay, but was... <laughs> Was Black planning to take on F4? I believe so. Well, at least... They can you... take with another pawn. Yeah, but then I take back and then you cannot take back. Okay, maybe knight g6. Oh, no, don't do that. And Now then... it's protected? Oh, no, it's getting... It's terrible. It was a terrible idea. I was so happy about this idea. Gosh, <laughs> I'm so bad with... Queen C2. Oh, gosh. Okay. So, oh, this is all not... Okay, let me have a different plan. Yeah. What about king to h1? Well, okay, with what idea? Uh, once the line on g is open, I can get my rook to g1 and... Okay, so I see your, your strategy. And the reason why it's not always a productive strategy is because you're giving the opponent the choice of when he wants to do that right uh -huh. he doesn't have to do it yet so you're basically giving all of the control that you have over the position to them if this is your only plan okay oh so you said you would rather be black here because of his great bond structure yeah and i don't see what's preventing you from having a great one yourself but did... oh is it g4? Was that too big of a hint? The, yeah, they, yes, it was. But of <laughs> course, it's crazy once you see it. It's really cool. Yeah. So oh. what is the goal of g4? Did you see what happens yes. after black captures? Yes. So if black would capture on g4, then you just push f5 forward and uh, definitely have a strong position now as white although you gave the pawn away but you probably can get the pawn back too right and uh, you maybe don't even want that pawn back because... actually you win a piece uh not really we'll we'll get to it. this is what oh. happened in the game um but all the other captures this runs into the same thing but even worse because then the pawn then then the knight also joins and uh, nice it looks like a bad uh um, a really bad position for black. Like a nightmare. <laughs> yes, good fun. Um, if they capture on on the F file, now we can have your queen C3 idea <laughs> and uh, attack attack the pawn on F4. So that's the next threat. Okay. If black does nothing, for example, then we have rook F4. So actually your idea came back. That At, at least something. That's yes. good. And if black captures with the e pawn, this opens up the center to That's our beautiful. advantage. We'll end up winning a piece. Still yeah. not that simple because um, black still yes. can sacrifice for two pawns, and it's not completely winning just yet. But g four was was the move to find. Uh, I think it's um, this uh, situation. This uh, this pawn structure is quite. Uh, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's very typical, but when it does happen, this is probably something you this is probably something you should aim for to keep keep the tension there until it's in your favor to to exchange the pawns or to, to simplify it. So Crazy. in the game, you were saying that you win a piece. You could, right? If um, well, if black uh, captures right away, which might be one of the better choices. Um, but here, we don't actually play f6. That would be a bit of an inaccuracy, because oh. even though we do win, a, you do win a piece on g7. Oh, this knight, knight is... Is coming to f4, and so it's blocking all, all play, so... Super powerful knight, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, Instead, we play back, queen back to d1. So, oh my god, it was maybe even counterproductive. <laughs> but in, in some cases, we did have queen c3, so it makes sense. 
and mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So the rest uh, of the game, they both just tried to improve the pieces. I don't think it was too. Um, I don't think it was too productive for black because all pieces just don't even have space. Okay. Uh, but uh, let's maybe stop here and try to guess what do you think the remaining plan for white is now that he has this pawn cemented on f5? What do you think is uh, the way to continue? Because you're probably already better uh, when, when you have this position as white, but converting it to a win is uh, is a different story. What do you think is the way to do it? Hmm. Okay, so I have to try to get an advantage on the G and H file, in my opinion, because although the pieces are all on the king side, they are still quite far away. I mean, the queen is like a bit out of play, the rooks as well, so maybe if I'm quick, I can make some nice move so i'm thinking of a sacrifice obviously of course it wouldn't be you if <laughs> oh so I think about it. how many pieces does black have defending mm. probably a lot yes and you even have less pieces attacking yeah them. yeah yeah the attack will probably not be quick enough Okay, maybe not. Do you know the <laughs> the um the ratio of pieces attacking to pieces defending? No. That is usually usually if it's three to one. So if you have three pieces attacking for every one piece defending, then the attack is non defensible. Like oh. there is nothing. Usually, usually that's that's the ratio, but of course it can it can be different. Sure. If it's two to one, it's harder. If it's one to one, it's even harder. But when there's more pieces defending than pieces attacking. It is usually very hard to make your attack successful. Okay. Okay, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's an interesting. I actually didn't know about this before. Now, what can we do? What can we do here? Hmm. How to break through? What to do? Uh, so for you at home, by the way, sorry, uh, I didn't want, to, I didn't forget you. Let's say it like that. But um, could you follow this uh, middle game strategies and ideas yet? And if so, what is the next move for white here? <laughs> difficult for me. Difficult. Difficult. So, if I bring the knight to d5, it doesn't help me that much. I think, okay, now let me think about it very simple again. Maybe there is a chance how I can get some of my pieces which are not in the best situation to get a better place. Sure, mm. yeah, once. So, a terrible piece is... Or maybe the I bishop on g2 will always stay terrible no matter what you do, just like the bishop on f6. Yeah, it's yeah. a fair trade usually in those in those positions. So what if I attack the knight on the other side now with the bishop on c3? You're yeah, you're very close. We are going to start playing on the on the queen side now. Okay. Bishop C, yeah, A4, Bishop C3. It's oh, C3. fantastic. And later you will either create the weakness on A5, or if the knight moves away, you're going to play A5 yourself. And that's the plan that should come to mind whenever you see this structure. This is not a backward pawn just yet, um, but once the file opens up, it will become a big, big weakness. And if we're ever allowed to play A5, we can... Black probably is not going to capture, but if he does, that's great because a7 is forever a weakness. But if not, then we can later gang up on that b6 pawn. So it's just creating a weakness on the other side of the board, which is actually effective because all of Black's pieces are still um, are still defending are still defending the king somewhere else. Okay. So 
a5 does happen so that's uh, also a very normal uh, plan for one of the sides whenever there is this pawn structure where you have a bit more space it's probably in your advantage to open it up a bit hmm. more and create a backward pawn for the opponent. Okay. So once the A file opened up, we don't even have to rush because this is the kind of advantage that we have is rather static. So nothing will change in four moves if we just make improving moves. Um, and uh, that's exactly what you should do in this position. So repositioning all of the pieces. And finally, there was a tactic oh. that worked out which was f6, and uh, the point was that probably this happens, and uh, this is why black could not have captured, but the point was, um, was yeah, to free up the f5 square and to get the knight there, but this is a good um, demonstration of playing on both sides of the board, right? So when you had good uh, a good advantage on one side where your f5 pawn was... Uh, controlling all of Black's pieces. You then switch over to the next one, creating another weakness, which is on the queen side. So now the pieces have to have to try to defend both. Mm -hmm. And this is what makes this position very easy to play. It's If you notice, the, tw like 20 moves have passed and there's still not a clear win. Yep. But this is exactly how you sometimes have to play middle games, is take it slow and uh, you focus on the the actually the principle of two weaknesses have you heard of it before you mentioned it a couple of times but repeat it for for those who do not know yet or, it's, or forgot it's the principle which says that if there is uh, if there is one weakness that the opponent has try to create another one hmm. so so yeah a, a weakness can be anything from like a passed pawn you having a passed pawn is the opponent's weakness for example or the opponent having a backward pawn on d6 so it can be anything or the or a weak king so for example the opponent has um, has a weak pawn on a7 but mm -hmm. usually one weakness is not enough to win the game because okay. the opponent can put all of his forces to defending that weakness and maybe you won't break through but uh, creating a second weakness for example opening up the opponent's king now it becomes harder for them to defend both the a7 pawn and the king and you can eventually be attacking both and one of them will fall so creating a second weakness is a very important principle in middle game positions because it makes your it, it makes your job uh, a lot uh, a lot easier yeah indeed it's uh, one of the biggest uh, tech no no strat strategies uh, or the or the strongest strategies to to win a game like may it be in the war or in in chess of course which is also a war after all yeah actually we can maybe have a lesson on it uh, later it's 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 a fairly important principle mm -hmm. that we that we can maybe take a look at deeper because this is not the the perfect example of it but it was just an example of play on both sides of the board but yeah we could we could possibly have a lesson on it sometime in the future sure thing yeah so the remaining uh, game is just a slow uh, a slow win for, <laughs> for white you just uh, my <laughs> went gosh back and forth still deciding what you want to do very effective when you're trying to reach the 40 move. Ah, yes, of course. And we go back to the queen side suddenly because decided to to attack the go back to attacking the a7 pawn. So it's just a lot of back and forth and uh, attacking both uh, on both sides. So yeah, it ended. Uh, oh, with nice, some nice tactic, and. Uh, <coughs> The main idea was I wanted to show you this, uh, what you can do in these pawn structures when the opponent is is attacking, is attacking, um, for example, like this with his pawns. You can sometimes counter it with the exact same thing and uh, create a really strong passed pawn. This is also an idea, you know, in those end games where there's three pawns standing and other three pawns. Of course, and yeah. Sacrifices and creates a passed pawn so these can happen in middle games too so 
Interesting. That, yeah, that is an example. Let's look at next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have to make a few moves here. This is um, this is a game. This is a game between yeah again again two grandmasters, and uh, it's um, it's a pawn structure which we see a lot. Uh, do you know which opening this occurs in? Hmm. Let me think. Of... I don't think you play this opening. No, I don't think so either. Is it the Rati system? Uh, no, it's it's definitely something oh, with D4. It, maybe yeah. Knight F3. Maybe it stays with Knight F3. But oh, okay, so no, I don't know. What what is it? It's a it's usually a Nimzo or oh. a Bogo Indian setup. Okay. So after Black has exchanged uh, that bishop on B4, for example. It was. Uh, I actually had a game in that opening, and though in my World Cup, huh. um, it's yeah, d4 knight knight of six, c4 e6, and uh, then, for example, knight f3 bishop b4 knight d2, and then later you captured that knight on d2, or bishop. Okay. D2. Uh, oh no, not the bishop of d2 because. Uh, the bishop is right here, so it wasn't bishop d2, but something along the lines of Nimzo Indian or Bogo Indian, that is the structure that we can get. Okay. So in such openings, black usually gives the center away at first, but then tries to challenge it later with moves like c5 and e5. Um, and uh, the question is, what do you think white's reaction to this should be? Should you be releasing the tension or keeping it there in the center for now? So let's see. From what I just learned, e4 is the best move. No, I'm just kidding. It would be a <laughs> terrible move. But um, I think it is... Hmm, I think it is maybe good to leave the tension again. Because if I take... I. I guess that black can get an advantage on the D file by castling long. After all, maybe that's a plan. On the other hand, the knight can get a bit more active on E5. When taking back, when taking on C5, the same applies. The The uh, line can be opened on D4. Uh, on D. Yeah, so I don't think uh, it's good to, to take back. For mm -hmm. the sake of yeah. the open line. You're, you're right. We don't uh, take uh, pawns usually like this because it improves uh, it improves the opponent's knight mm -hmm. or even pawn structure could be improved as well. So usually here we would not want to take here as white. Okay. So what do we play instead? Hmm. So now, of course, we have the option to either pass to d5... But then there would be e4, and I don't like that at all. Hmm. Maybe it is the best to play e4. No, still not. <laughs> um, hmm. Is e4, is this a threat from black? Right now, probably not, because it can become a weakness. We play queen c2, and... Uh... Yeah, so d5 is mm -hmm. Play queen c2, for example. And uh, we can keep attacking that. Yeah, that's true. That's good. So then we leave the spawn there. Hmm. What can we do? So if the queen goes to a4, nothing happens. The queen's just out of the game. What happens when we play p4? Huh. Maybe. Maybe b4 is not so bad after all. B4 was played in the game and oh. uh, it 
YouTube that uh, that increases the tension. And you also mentioned D5, which I think is uh, also a very good option. Oh. Maybe even simpler, in my opinion. I would probably I would probably prefer to play this position. Oh. Uh, the one after B4 gets uh, gets a bit complicated, but both uh, D both D5 and B4 are are great moves. So actually, both. Uh, answers would be right if you, if I, I asked you about either releasing the tension or the or keeping it and actually both could be correct depending if you find the further plan so the point of d5 is that you forever close that bishop and uh, later you can play queen c2 so knight g8 is looks strange but it's the only way to keep playing f5 and uh, wow. you can also try to put your pieces like that and never allow any e4 or f5 and have a have a static uh, good good advantage and i would i like those positions usually because i think i do prefer close positions myself but hmm. um but b4 is very interesting as well um and capturing you correctly decided that it's not great to do because we are improving the opponent's the opponent's night by doing that okay hmm. and before before is is correct here um since you really wanted to see e4 happen i think it does occur here in this line Jeez. tries to play something insane like d5 we can capture capture and play your favorite move <laughs> Uh, my favorite move is f4. No, e4 is your favorite move. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been uh, wanting to play it. You're <laughs> so right, I forgot already. Yes, that favorite move. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, that's just a, a sub variation that, crazy that included that same uh, yeah. three pawns and three pawns. So, it's not an idea that you can only have you know on the king side, it, it can happen very well in the center or somewhere else. Very effective to create one pass pawn if it's yeah. working. Of course, if it's working out uh, for you tactically, it's uh, usually a good way to to create a pass a pass pawn. So that's just an, an example of something quite crazy for Black. Of course, he did not play it, and instead he played castles. So it might look like the Oof. pawn on d4 is hanging, but it really is not because. If you ever do capture it, it's uh, not a very good capture to make. First of all, you will not be able to keep the spawn, and second, there is always rookie of one. Of course, yeah. On not not, it's not favorable for black to open up the center like that. So before, in that way, you keep the tension there for now, and um, yeah, honestly, usually keeping the tension is a good way to play especially when you're playing against someone um lower rated than yourself right you want to have as much complications and uh, as much uh, tension as possible mm -hmm. because the more choice there is the more likely they are to make a mistake because when you Evil. have when you've closed the position when you've made captures it's easier for them to decide what to do whereas if you keep a lot of options so here you know black can capture like this like this can play d5 has a lot of options so it's easier uh, you give them more room to make a mistake that's, that's a good lesson yeah very it's good. A good psychological uh in the trap for for the opponent <laughs> so a queen c2 knight f6 yeah maybe here we can think of a further plan Okay. Do you think this is the right moment to release the tension now, or do we hmm. keep it on, or what else do we do? Hmm. So now, I like d5 mm -hmm. because we we block this bishop a bit more. Now there's no other pieces which can intrude too much. Hmm. Right, d5 is almost. Almost it. Almost. So close. So if it's not d5, then... Play d5 on move two. Of... Oh, okay. Hmm. Do I just take a rook to d1, maybe? Uh, no, the rook hmm. uh, 
is not going to go to D1. It's going to go to B1 because we first just oh. open up the file and then play D1. And then we can play D5. Oh, okay. So this is a position that uh, I would really like as white, right? Yes. So you opened up the file first because you don't want to give black the option to take on B4. So we just opened it up. It's uh, black can also bring the rook to b8, but we do have the upper hand here with maybe some knight b3, um, knight a5 plans mm -hmm. later, queen a4, and um, yeah, this is <coughs> which you can slowly play forever because you don't really have weaknesses as white, but black does have weaknesses on d6, a7, and yeah, so nice. this is not what happened in the game, and uh, oh. they actually so he captured and captured on e5 so he chose the oh. the wrong way to release to to release the tension here because now it becomes a lot more complicated for for no reason white had no reason to make it uh, this tactical and uh, even though this is not uh, bad just yet but uh, um it went into a completely different direction from here on and uh, White even ended up losing this game um, oh. because after some tactics, White somehow lost this C pawn and managed to lose because of this past C pawn for Black, which is something you would have never expected from the beginning oh. position, but it it happens. Um, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to show it, particularly that pawn structure that we have here where. Black is attacking the center like this, and uh, what choices you have of capturing or mm -hmm. when it is right to be pushing. And uh, um, yeah, usually I would say um, it's good to keep the tension on for as long as you can until either first the opponent has the chance to release it in his advantage. So you don't want to keep the spawns there for too long because white black will capture them at some point and maybe open up the file for himself instead of for you so that's when it's the right time to let's say take one of those pawns um or also if um if you get something something concrete for it so you get an open file so this is why we did end up capturing on c5 you get an open file or you get a bishop pair you get uh, a better pawn structure or another type of advantage. So you keep it there until you have to you have to do something about it. So huh. in this pawn structure, if someone plays the, if any of you play the Nimzo or the Bogo Indian, you might uh, encounter it as from the black side, or if you play d4 as white, you can also encounter it from the white side. And you remember to sometimes have this b4 idea and to remember when to play d5 or when to wait i usually like waiting because uh, you still you keep your opponent wondering what you're going to do next mm -hmm. so, yeah. super I have interesting one more little example do we uh, have sure of course let's go for it it's not it's it's more of a tactic it's not okay. a long example um so this is it let me is this where it starts? Um, let me see if this is where it starts. Sure, of course. I won't look. I will look into your okay. faces, dear people at home. <laughs> Did you know about this holding the tension in the middle game? I wasn't aware of it. I think it's very interesting again. And yeah, keeping those yeah, pawns. It's, pawn it's like a standoff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In so the this Wild is West. So, okay. White to play and win. Mm, close to it. <laughs> close to Maybe. It. Okay, white to play. So, well, is this working? I think e4. Okay, what is uh, the plan here with e4? Well, with e4, you can, um, once this is done, then you can, um, help me, 
Uh, you can. <laughs> Four is right. I'll, um, yes. I'll make it easier. It, it just is, because it right. looks. This is this intuition thing. It just okay. looks as if it's correct. And of course, we had the motive before, obviously. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and of course, we we saw it three times before. Exactly. So that might be why. So what about if um, when I push? No. Hmm. It's interesting. So I see a couple of options. But I think pushing with d5 is probably the most effective. And what happens? I'm not sure what happens after we just take. Hmm. And you created a very good center for... That's for terrible. Black. Terrible news for white. Okay, let me, t uh, let me rethink this. So what about if we just take on e4? And then, yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is the tactic here. Um, I thought about yeah. this earlier, but I couldn't find it now. So, okay, this is the open line on mm -hmm. F. So we take, take back, take back. There's a check. Ah, uh, no, huh? Ah, uh, no, huh? <laughs> um, check, check. Oh, it's the rook going to F6? No, it's not the rook going to F6. It isn't? No. Are you sure? It looks so good. Okay, so if that's not the case, <laughs> why isn't it? <laughs> so if I just give... So where does the queen go? It's it's over. Black is lost. <laughs> oh Here, no, yes, that's a check. Black is not effective. Oh Maybe. no. Oh no! Possibly, but I do see why it look why it would look appealing. So what is what is happening next? There's a check, then the queen goes to g six, and then I oh. And then I go to d eight. Then the queen goes to g seven. Oh, it is happening! Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. I just have to think forward a couple of more moves. Gosh! Mm -hmm. So now, if yeah. the queen goes, if if the queen goes to g seven, for example, um, then the. I thought this would work. Is I it the bishop to... Bishop to g5 is not here yet because I was thinking knight d7 is the only saving, but maybe you're not actually attacking much, are you? Bishop f6 is not a threat. Bishop e7 is not, is not a threat. Yeah, I don't think it's bishop... Uh, but was, what is happening here now? How can I take advantage of this situation after queen g7? Maybe take and... Uh, oh, no. How will you deal with this? Uh, oh. Or bishop coming to f to c3? Sometimes it's simple. It's That's really, tough. It's really that simple. Yeah, it, it, this one was tough to find e4 and knight e4 and to calculate this, this whole thing. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. e4, right, it's the kind of move that you don't even see in the first place. So the, True. the point is I want you to start seeing those moves when you see pawn structures like that to calculate it. Maybe 80% um, maybe of the time it will just be, it will just be a pawn blunder, <laughs> but sometimes it can become a beautiful tactic like that. By the way, all of the other captures are not any better. For example, like this, we don't even need to sacrifice our knight because we can just go to d8 straight away and have this position. Looks juicy, yeah. Good. For us, if uh, they close up with f4, that is not enough because we just uh... went to f5. Uh, what else is there? There's e takes d4. That's the other capture. So a lot of captures to calculate, but it is all forced and... Uh, you just look at the captures back and uh, there's not much else to do. Keep attacking the queen and we don't let the queen alone until we have improved all of our pieces. Oh, evil. This is winning as well. So this is why this e4 works out and 
it it looks insane at first glance, but as you said, knight e4, and uh, yeah, this one is a bit is is a bit tough. Um, in the game, knight d7 continued here, so not oh. queen d7. And uh, we just, uh, white just took the rook. Yeah. And oh. even though there was something to deal with, uh, still Wasn't with those enough. ones, it's not enough because the king is just not, uh, it's just not uh, safe yet. Oh. And we end up Oh, that's nice. Bishop oh. H6 is nice, right? How long does a chess grandmaster like Darius Svirch in this case <laughs> take for planning a move like this to calculate all those lines? Oh. I actually don't think he calculated the entire thing. Huh. So, um, he, yeah. Usually decisions like these, of course, this is very tactical still, but I think you can honestly maybe even stop calculating after queen d8 or it's it's highly intuitive for for a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of players you just see maybe maybe he did calculate it I don't know how much time he had or what the situation was but even as a position like this you just um as a grandmaster would think he wouldn't maybe calculate the whole thing till the end but he sees that this rook is out of play this knight is out of play um, this is pinned. I have uh, all of my pieces working. I have threats coming soon. And the only way for Black to ever develop his pieces is to give away his knight or his rook. <laughs> so I'm fine with it because I will regain all of my material and keep my initiative. So something like this could probably be the thought process. You don't always need to calculate till the end, but of course it's great if you did. It's usually, that's the recommended path, but this is why sometimes... Uh, let's say grandmasters they don't calculate the whole thing till the very end because they just know intuitively that it will work out for them crazy this one was highly tactical so yeah this was um the end yeah i already showed the end white just won one of the other pawns and then nothing is on so yeah i with those uh, few examples i wanted to show some Pawn breakthroughs, which uh, usually you probably wouldn't even look at because it looks it looks completely crazy. But uh, although we're often tempted to release the tension because the position seems too complicated, um, we it's important to know the right moments of when to keep it on and when when not to keep it. So sometimes you want to make it harder for the opponent to calculate everything, and you want to keep it tense for as long for as long as possible and of course good calculation is uh, is very important here as Indeed. well so nothing happens without tactics yeah you can unshare the screen that was super informative at least uh, for me i hope for you at home as well now let me ask you a question what was the longest time you've ever thought uh, about a move can you remember um, I don't remember a specific situation, but I definitely know I have thought more than 20 minutes on hmm. on a move. Maybe, yes, 25 or or potentially even 30. Uh, but I've actually heard this um, rule that I... And we might have even talked about it I before. I think we that did, if yeah. It, if it goes over 20 minutes, it's usually not productive. Unless hmm. you're calculating something super super deeply and you need to make sure everything works perfectly and you're winning in the next five moves if you get if you calculated it right then yes it's worth it you don't you're not going to need that time for later but in in a you in most cases usually over 20 minutes is not really productive especially if it's something super simple it's like you're spending 30 minutes <laughs> deciding whether you move rook f to d1 or rook a to d1 it's like the difference is going to be 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 in like computer evaluation yeah. right it's not going to be big so in these cases it is not it is not necessary so that's 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 something i've heard that if you're at 20 minutes and you don't see a significant difference, then just play it because the rest of the calculation is not productive. Okay. Oh, wow. Do you actually, uh, just another question, do you read books? 
like okay you, of course everybody reads books but do is it like a hobby of yours or more or less no you mean chess books or like... in general in general I've uh, haven't lately I haven't had time to do it I would really like to have time to do it but lately I read chemistry books biology books <laughs> Text, it's textbooks not the books uh, not the fun type of books yeah okay of course yes okay so even that in school so I'm this is just an anecdote I have so I was a terrible book reader for some reason probably because I'm just a dreamer person so every time I was reading something and then after the first page they mentioned something in the book which reminded me of something or I thought of something else and then I was like drifting on into those thoughts and like oh, yeah I've been to London once it was very nice and I'm still reading so I'm reading like three or four pages but I didn't get anything and you forget what you read i didn't read i didn't know anything because i was thinking while i was reading about london or something else mm -hmm. so i recognized this uh, this year i was playing a tournament in malta and i was thinking about a move pretty long i think at least 25 minutes but i think 10 minutes mm -hmm. of those 25 minutes i was thinking of like oh, i wonder what's happening tomorrow it's saturday so i'm going <laughs> to play the... and i was and then, then i thought like oh it's my move i have to do something do you yeah. Is it like, um, so this is a concentration thing, of course. Mm -hmm. is, do you ever drift away in, in other thoughts while having a chess game? Or are you like fully focused? And do you think no, this is I, the only I'm, way? I'm not uh, fully, I, I, I'm, I try, I try, yeah. But I, I have that sometimes mm. as well. Not not in every game, uh, but but sometimes <laughs> sometimes yes or usually it's whenever the opponent is thinking because the good thing to do when your opponent is thinking is that you also think and you try to you try to think ahead as much as you can but when the opponent is thinking i'm usually usually not thinking about the position um if i'm not in time trouble then yes i do i can drift away so what why why are they taking so long can you can you just play already so <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. You calculate all of the options. That also happens. Yeah, yeah, true. That's completely... it, happens. it happens sometimes. Come on. I think it happens. Just, happens to everyone. Just play this move now, which will lose uh, the whole game for you. Come on, <laughs> fall into my trap, something like this. How about you at home? I want to know. Um, do you sometimes drift into other thoughts while having a chess game over the board, maybe? Or do, or do you think it's like, or are you fully focused and go like chess, 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 <laughs> this move, that move? And I'm also a person who's standing up pretty often when I'm playing mm -hmm. a game, I have to mm -hmm. say. Uh, anyway, yeah. Svetlana, thank you so much for this lovely Uh, lesson of yours and uh, I hope you at home liked it as well and we see each other next week again bye bye